my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to look at debugging Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. In a previous video, we also looked at debugging D365, and in that video, we attached to the existing IIS or W3 process in Visual Studio by going up to the debug menu and selecting attach to process and then either finding the IIS Express process or the W3WP process. Um, in this case, we've got W3WP. It, in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of a different way um, and kind of explain when you would use one versus the other. Attaching to the existing process can be helpful when you need to debug objects that are part of the base Microsoft um, models that are not directly in a project or solution that you've created. But very often you're going to be creating new uh, objects, new tables, new forms um, that you wish to debug, classes uh, that are going to exist in your uh, Visual Studio solution, in which case we can use the start button to attach to um, the debug process just like we would in many other standard languages and many ways that you would use Visual Studio. Uh, so let's go ahead and start from scratch and uh, see what that looks like. So I can create a new Dynamics 365 project by saying File, New, Project. I can select Dynamics 365 under Installed and select Finance Operations. I can then give it a name and say, okay, I'm going to call my um, project and solution name Debugging2. I can say create a directory for the solution. And in this case, I'm going to not add this solution to source control. Then when I click OK, it's going to go ahead and create a new solution for me. Notice right now it's setting the model to fleet management by default. Um, you, there's a different setting that allows you to specify what the default model is. We won't go into that in this video, um, but it does just default to a model. But that may not be the model that contains the object you wish to debug. Very often you might have your own custom model where you're adding all of your custom code because you can't add you know, code to um, base Microsoft models. Um, but we can still debug base Microsoft objects and add them to a solution um, for the purposes of debugging. So in this case, I want to debug the form invent item group as an example. Um, I can find invent item group by opening the application explorer. I can do that by saying view application explorer if you don't see it in the list and then you can type invent item group and find it in the search results. Then we can actually add this to the existing project or we can create a new project. In this case it's not giving us the option to add to the current project and the reason for that is because this invent item group is in a different model than our current project is. We can see in this text here uh, in between the brackets it says it's part of the application suite model whereas our project is part of the fleet management model. So the first thing we need to do is change the uh, model that our project is pointing to. And if I add any other objects in this project already, I would need to remove them before it's going to let me change the model. But once I've got a blank project, I can select properties and come down and change the model to be the one that I'm going to be debugging objects for. So I'll find the one for application suite. Another good idea is sometimes to turn on this synchronized database on build to true when you are making changes and creating new tables or extended data types or changes to extended data types. For now, we'll leave that set to false. That'll make our um, kind of build time a little faster. So in this case, I'm going to click OK. Now we can see that this is changed to application suite. Now when I right click on my invent item group, I can say add to project and I can add my um, form to the project. 
Uh, now we're essentially ready to debug this object using the start button. Um, but before we do that, I want to show you one faster way we could have kind of created this project um, just from scratch. So if I actually close my solution just to show you from the very beginning, I'll say no. Um, and if I find my form right here, I can actually right click on it and just say add to new project. When I do that, it's going to automatically open the dialog for creating a new project. We can um, create our new um, project and solution. I'll call it debugging three and click OK. And then what's nice about this is the system automatically recognizes the model um, that this object is a part of and it changed the project model to be application suite as well. All right we're all ready to debug um, but the first thing we need to do is actually add a breakpoint so to do that i'm going to first double click on this um, to open up the designer um, and i can actually look at methods and other things to think about okay what would i like to debug normally you probably have an idea already of where you want to debug um, but in this case i'm browsing around to see what I could debug. Here's an existing init method. Um, I can view that code by either double clicking on this or more commonly you're going to right click on your object and say view code and it will show you all of um, the code behind this form. I'm going to go ahead and put a breakpoint in this init method so I can test showing you how to debug. Um, to add a breakpoint, we can do it a couple different ways. You can click in this bar all the way on the left hand side and it'll add this red circle. This is our breakpoint. Or I can actually push the F9 key. Um, that's just a shortcut that I recommend uh, you memorize. That will add a breakpoint or remove it. It, it essentially toggles the breakpoint. So now I've got a breakpoint here. I could then put a breakpoint um, here as well and I can set as many breakpoints as I want. All right, now we're ready to debug. Again, in a previous video, we talked about how you can open up D365 front end from a browser and then debug and attach to process. Um, that's one possibility, but usually kind of a faster process and a different process that you're pr probably more used to when using other languages such as C Sharp um, is you can right click on our object and say set as startup object. This is very similar to what you might select for um, another type of language. When we do that, the object becomes bold indicating that this is our startup object. If we had a whole bunch of other objects, they'd all be a uh, unbolded text. Um, and w there's only certain types of objects that we can set as a startup object, you know, forms, uh, menu items. We can set classes as startup objects if they have a main uh, static main method. Um, but here we go. Uh, we've set this as our startup object. And now I can actually just click start or, you know, F5 for short um, to actually start uh, debugging our form. Uh, Visual Studio is going to be smart for us and automatically open this form. Um, even though we don't have a menu item uh, point, as our startup object, we can still just point to the form directly. The system's now going to load our symbols. Um, as well as attached to the current process. So what's nice about this is you don't have to um, really pay attention or worry about are we attaching to IIS Express or W3WP. The system's just going to um, attach to the proper process for us. It's also going to open a uh, Internet Explorer browser for us to show us the form and um, add our and finally kind of attach to process and show us our um, our stack of where we are in the code. One thing you may encounter when you first try to debug is you'll see that your debug symbols here will become open circles. 
um, meaning that the symbols have not loaded um, and so the system's unable to um, break when it runs this code and break on this breakpoint. This is very common. I've got another um, previous video and article on kind of how to address this, so definitely check it out. Um, but the quick version is you go to Dynamics 365 and then Options, and usually there's a three settings that you really wanna check. Under Dynamics 365 Debugging, you want to make sure that load symbols only for items and solution is unchecked, um, especially if you're having problems. This can be totally fine to leave checked, but if you're having trouble with your symbols being loaded, I definitely recommend you unchecking this checkbox. You can always add it back later. The other two very common places is under debugging um, general. There's this enable just my code. Very likely you're going to want to uncheck this um, checkbox. Then uh, last place is under symbols. Um, you can set this to be load all modules and make sure that there's no excluded modules. You And you can check Microsoft symbol servers and say load all symbols and click OK. This does mean that many more symbols are being loaded than if you had some of these changes uh, changed and only select specific modules, but these settings can be helpful when um, you're really struggling to get your symbols to load. Okay, we can see that Visual Studio has loaded our symbols and run our form. So if I um, scroll down here, I can see it's actually opened a browser um, and it's browsing in D365 to this form. But since I put my code in the init method, um, it's hit our breakpoint before actually drawing any of the visual UI components of our form. So here we go. Um, I can see this yellow arrow. This yellow arrow and line is our execution pointer. It shows us what line of code we're on. Um, and then from here, I can actually step through the code and look at local variables, um, etc. So the main tools that you're going to use um, are this step into, step over, and step out. So for me, most commonly, I use the step into and step over keys, and this uses F11 and F10. Those are just really good shortcuts to memorize. So if I wanna move on to the next line of code, I can actually just push F11, and my execution pointer goes to the next line. I can do so again by pushing F10. If I want to go inside this method and see what code's in here, um, I can push F11, and this is gonna make the system go inside of this method. Um, then I can keep stepping and move through this code as much as I want, um, or I can set another breakpoint further on. So in this case, I've got a breakpoint outside this method after it's run, and I can run the execution pointer all the way to my next breakpoint by hitting the continue button or F5. So if I hit continue, it's now run all the code that it needs to through here and come to this next line. Um, and that's kind of it. Once I'm ready and I'm satisfied uh, with what I've debugged, I can click continue. And if there's no other breakpoints, it'll actually return me to the front end form that I can interact with. If I've got a breakpoint in a button click, I can then click that button and hit my breakpoint, uh, kind of et cetera, et cetera. The last couple of things I'll point you to is under this tab here, I can see there's locals. This is going to show me the local variables that are in scope. Um, to the context of the object we're debugging. So I can see the invent item group is um, a data source record that we're currently selected. It hasn't been loaded yet, um, so we're, we're still seeing kind of a rec ID zero here. Over here, I can see the call stack, and this is really useful to see all the different code um, that's been called. Um, when we stepped into this uh, method here, you could probably see that we were one line deeper um, in the init method. So this is really useful. You can double click on these lines to go up in the call stack and, and see um, what classes or forms um, 
called the current method that you're in. In this case, uh, the kernel code is calling our init method and there's not really any higher up form. So I, if I double click on this, it's not gonna be able to show me um, that source code, but I can just double click to go back and see this here. Um, there's a lot of other tools uh, that you can use um, and ways that you can set conditional breakpoints, but I'll leave that uh, for another video. I'll go ahead and click F5. And when we do that, it'll finish loading our form. In this case, I'm in the DAT company, so I'm not seeing any um, data right now. Okay, that, that's it. Again, this Visual Studio provides us a really great way to debug code. We get all of the power of Visual Studio in debugging our X++ code. Um, this is a big improvement in D365. Um, and uh, this, again, this is a different way of debugging where you're using the start button to um, start up your object and debug versus attaching to a process. I think the main difference, I would use this start button when I'm creating my own objects um, and have objects in my project that I'm um, already, uh, that are in my solution. If they're not in my solution, sometimes then I'll use the uh, debug attach to process. Um, but again, it's personal preference, do whatever you're more comfortable with, okay? Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.